Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Utterly Unscripted. You're with Jesse Veritas, the host of your show. The point of this podcast is there is no point. If you're here for cohesion, a beginning, a middle and an end, you certainly have come to the wrong place. I can't help you. It is a, it's a safe space where my friends and I get together over a glass of our favorite bevy and we talk about all things that are important to us. Um, today I'm joined by my friend Nick Pease and before we go any further, I can just see his microphone is muted, so I'm not going to be able to hear him. <laughs> there we go. That, You're back on. Should do, should do. Hi, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for that. No, no, that's okay. Not a problem. I don't know what happened. I just saw the little while I was talking, yeah, I saw it turn off and I thought that's a bit interesting. Yeah. I'll have to say something because yeah. I can't do anything about it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I'm drinking oh, water this evening. Unfortunately, it's nothing exciting. It's 6 44 p.m. on a Sunday night. I'm mm. getting ready to start yeah. work again in, in a few hours and you know, I thought I, I was going to have a glass of wine, but I thought better of it. I might get drunk and not be up to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking this morning? Oh, uh, just water, actually. So nothing yeah, too good. exciting. But, uh, no, no, yeah. that's okay. It's, uh, it's only quarter past ten in the I was going to say, you've so, only got about ten yeah. o'clock, haven't you? So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. A bit early yet. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit early. But you never know. It's five o'clock somewhere, they say. Well, exactly that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is the author of um, an exciting book. It just came out in March. Was it March that it was released? It was March the 29th, yeah. Fantastic. It's called Revelation. Now, what I've been told is that it is a thought-provoking, exciting thriller that gets the author to think about what if life after death could actually be proven as a scientific fact. This is extremely interesting to me, Nick. I, I, yeah. I don't know if you've heard, I've had other guests on the show where we talk about things like this. Where did your idea come from for Revelation? Um, well, really from my life's experiences. Uh, I'm a spiritual medium myself. And from childhood, around the age of five, I was able to hear spirits. Mm. Um, and then I started to see them in my early teens. So I've always been aware of other dimensions to this earthly existence. And uh, at the moment, nothing can be proven. You know, mm. most faiths believe in some kind of afterlife. I think a lot of people, as you rightly say, have a great interest in these things. And it's one of the biggest questions that face us in, in our own lives. We all wonder what will happen after death. Well, for me, of course, it was it was proven to me purely through my experiences of seeing and, and hearing spirits for myself. Mm. But I readily admit that unless you have those experiences for yourself, uh, it's going to leave doubts, and quite rightly so. But the idea for the book Revelation came about of, through thinking, what if somebody could invent a device, a machine, in the case of my book, it's called Revelation, which could actually reveal life after death as a 100% proven scientific fact. And that's the sort of basis of the story. And mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, I like to think it is very thought provoking, because of course, once uh, we have, we start with two brilliant young scientists who are working on a completely different project for the CIA. Mm -hmm. to develop an energetic device which can reveal things in their energetic nature so that things like improvised explosive devices, landmines, etc., et can be revealed and, and uh, uh, dealt with. And they're working out in Iraq on, on this project. The project fails, so they come back to Washington, D.C., where they squirrel away equipment and just for their own interest continue to experiment. Mm. I'm not going to give too much away, but... But suffice to say, yes, they do prove 100%, quite by accident, as indeed most scientific great breakthroughs <laughs> happen. They're always by accident. Quite by accident, they happen to stumble across the fact that life after death is a 100% scientific fact. But of course, that's where the book really takes off, because if people stop to think about it, what would happen if that were 
to be revealed to the world. Mm. You and I might think, how wonderful, what a fantastic mm. thing, and it might, might make, really lift us up. But there are many people in the world who might see it as a threat, a threat to their status quo, a threat to their beliefs, whatever it might be. And that's essentially where the book becomes a thrilling chase with mm. those in power who want to put an end to Revelation and its author and its inventors. Um, and then it's a chase as to whether the truth can come out into the public domain before they are terminated. And wow. it's a roller coaster ride full of action, full of thrills and spills. Uh, there's romance, there's humor, uh, there's everything in there. Um, but underneath it all, very thought provoking questions being asked as mm. to what would really happen if this if this did did come about so it was my lifelong interest that that made me come up with the idea for revelation and then i thought let's write it in a thriller format so that it's exciting and yeah. as i often say to people you could read it just as a thriller you don't have to get too too involved in the deeper questions being posed it is a roller coaster ride and just just a fun fun read but actually, there's a lot in there. There's a lot of depth. There's a lot of spiritual philosophy. There's a lot of uh, religious, scientific, etc. facts based in the knowledge of today. So the whole thing is very cohesive. It's a short book, 260 odd pages, short chapters, very fast read. Um, it's and nice, actually. I like that it. about it. Yeah. 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 So that's it. I uh, I'm up to about chapter four. Four, I think, and like you said, it's not it's not a difficult book to read, and I like I like that. Um, Good. Like I said to you before we started recording, I have about sixteen books. Um, I'm about to I'm just about to finish one off, <laughs> one that that has taken me a very long time. I've been reading it for about three months just because everything else has been extremely busy and we've had lots going on. And I started a yeah. new job and I've been studying, so it's been difficult for me to find the time to do that, sure. to sit and read, which is one of my favorite things to do. So I feel like I'm missing out. So I did start reading Revelation and you are absolutely correct. It is easy to get through. Um, Marty and Jack are the characters that, that I've been introduced to. So they seem to be the lead the lead characters. And the way I read is to play it out like a film in my head. <laughs> Well, it's funny you should say that because many people have said it would make a great film. And, yeah, so uh, far. It is I'm, kind of yeah. because, because there's a lot of dialogue in it and everything, it could mm. very easily translate straight into a, a film script. Yeah, yeah. Marty, and, and I'm not going to give too much away, but Jack becomes the main protagonist. He's the one who has got to get Revelation into the public domain. And yeah. he teams up with what becomes his romantic interest, Linda, um, okay. But they have to stay one step ahead of people who who are on their tail and want to terminate their man, the machine. So mm. it is a thrilling ride. And and, uh, and I hope we'll make people think, yeah, it wouldn't just be a, a, a ride in the park. It, if this happened, and I believe it will one day, by the way, probably yeah. not in my lifetime, but, but because science is investigating so much about energetic uh, vibrations and frequencies and things that's that's where they will pick up spirit eventually um, mm -hmm. but it would be a threat to a lot of people uh, a lot of people yeah. would would find it quite quite worrying others i hope like you and i would say this is fantastic this is what mm. we've always understood mm. and 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 it gives so much hope and 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 light and I, a lot of people who've read the book have, have fed that back to me that not only did it make them think but it actually uplifted them and filled mm. them with hope and joy and and the again i'm not going to give it away but the end of the book has a very life-affirming conclusion which i think leads you on a high um okay. and, and and i guess to extrapolate from that jesse i i think the world needs it i think the world needs a shake-up it needs something yeah. to shake us out of this complete nonsense that's going on around the world where we're all fighting each other and there seems so much kind of discord and hatred and and social media often sort of encourages that of course there's the other side of it where there's a lot of people trying to do good and trying to try to heal people look after people etc but but the world really is in need of a shake up at the moment because yes whether you look at the violence going on whether you look at what we're doing to the environment 
whether you look at how we're not living in harmony, etc. There needs to be something, and I think something like the discovery of life after death as an absolute fact, or mm. whatever else might happen some big big event that slaps us around the face and says wake up um, sometimes we need that slap around the face yeah, yeah you're absolutely wake right yeah yeah yes yeah. yeah exactly and a new perspective for people and uh, look you're absolutely right we've been talking about it for a long time people have been studying and trying to find some ways i'm reminded of an article that i that i read I would have to say I might have been maybe 15. So it's a long it's a yeah. long time ago, maybe 1996, 95 maybe even. Um and it was called 1800 Heaven and it was an uh, it was an article slash essay on what would happen if we had a phone that could dial to our loved ones after they've passed away. So that was the basis of it. It wasn't no, meant to be religious in any way. It no, came no. from some people who are religious in their, in their dealings. So they, they are religious, but it was, it was a worldly article. It was supposed to touch anyone who has ever lost someone and to give them the, the ability to think about what would happen if we could do that, who would be the first person that you call? Would you call even, you know, some people find it very difficult to, to say that they would, you know, it's their way of dealing with grief, I suppose, that they're gone now. I just, you know, my way of healing and moving on is to just let it go. And yep. I personally don't understand that. I would love to have a phone, a phone line straight in, you know, <laughs> to be able to talk to whoever, you know, if it's if it's God, what you think is God, or if it's someone who's passed away, why wouldn't you want to use that? And we are talking more and more about trying to prove those things. So I love how thought provoking and very, uh, it's realistic. It feels yeah. real and it should be real. Like someone uh, somewhere uh, is going to read this book, Nick, and they're going to say, ah, oh, I know how to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's you make a very, very important point, and it's something that um, I always say to people when I wrote Revelation. I mean, my whole life, I have obviously, apart from developing as a spiritual medium, mm. I've got a degree in philosophy because I did that deliberately to uh, to question my what was happening to me because there's no more forensic. Uh, uh, um, you know, cynical almost, but but very uh, disbelieving kind of form of of investigation as philosophy. It puts everything mm. under the microscope in a very critical way, and quite rightly so. And I wanted to do that because although I could see the reality of life after death, I thought I need to clothe myself in the knowledge of really understanding the nature of existence and everything in a way that. Um, philosophy does in a very, very analytical way. So mm -hmm. I did that. I take a great interest in the world's religions and have read up extensively on them. I take a great interest in scientific developments and uh, what's happening in the world of science, particularly as it relates to uh, energetic uh, studies, because as we know, the spirit world is about energy. Everything in the universe is about energy and you cannot destroy energy, no. as Einstein mm. proved. So this is why one day I think they really will find a device that accidentally picks up spirit vibration because mm. spirits uh, uh, exist on a much higher energetic frequency than we do. And yeah. our earth vibration is actually very dense and that's why communication with spirit through mediums or whatever way you might like to try it is actually very difficult because spirit have to lower their vibration to communicate with us conversely through mm. meditation and going into silence we have to raise our vibration for that communication to take place it's yeah. it's not as simple as people might might imagine and the more dense we make our earth vibration through wars and violence and, and and bad things going on the more difficult that becomes um yes so yeah if there were a device that could cut through that uh and, and i think it will happen accidentally scientists are doing so much work in in the field of energy and everything they discover uh, tends to be by accident so yes yeah 
Pe- people probably won't even be looking for it. They'll be looking for something else. Or It'll doing be something, something completely else. different. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's what, that's exactly what happens in my book. And yeah. you're right, Jesse, everything in the book is founded on the knowledge of today. So mm. for example, when you see, and it's not a heavy read at all, but there are some uh, uh, passing scientific references, sometimes done with humor. Uh, there are religious references, uh, philosophical references, spiritual references, everything. Everything is rooted in the knowledge of today. So you're right, mm. it's totally realistic. Yeah. Every people who read it, and I've had this feedback, have said to me, wow, that's exactly how I've thought about it, or or that really made me think. And it and it's cohesive and it's rational and it's rooted in things that people can recognize and understand and say, yes, that is reality. This yeah, is not science yeah. fiction at all. Not science no. fiction at all. It's it is completely uh, uh, founded in in the knowledge of today. So uh, I hope when people read it, it really does strike a chord in many ways. Mm. And when I've been reading, um, I knew this already about you, about you working, you know, you've, you've developed yourself as a, as a medium, um, over the years. I knew that about you, but funny enough, I actually forgot. So, (laughs) so, you know, when you're reading a book from somebody who is, who works as a medium or works in, in the light field you know is a is a as a, there's a new term i learned from one of my guests um her episode is coming up soon she calls them super feelers you oh, yeah. are feeling more than just your everyday joe you're you're a little more tuned in so you have the super feelers um when you are a super feeler and you write a book there is a trap that many seem to fall in and it tends to become one of those books where it's a bit preachy, even if you oh, don't absolutely. intend it to be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But this and isn't like that at all. Feeling. No, yeah. not at all. And I never preach to anybody. In fact, uh, Jesse, I don't even call myself a spiritualist or anything like that. Yes. I developed mm. as a spiritual medium at, the very best place, the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain in London with the best mediums of the day. And I am going back over 30 years now. Um, But I don't call myself a spiritualist because I think labels just divide us and Mm. make people sort of pigeonhole you. I think of myself as a free free thinker. Um, Mm -hmm. I will always be striving for greater truths throughout my life. I don't pretend to know all the answers. And I certainly don't preach to people. I never say, well, you should believe this because I've had those experiences. I think you come to things in your own way. You find your own truth. Now, for some people, that will be through their faith. That's great. For other people, it will be through being uh, complete non-believers. Other people will have a particular view on life or whatever it might be. Mm. All I'm saying is, is there is within each one of us a greater spirituality that we can attain. And a lot of the ancient cultures express that, uh, take a great interest, for example, in the Native Americans. And they viewed the great spirit, as they would call what others might call God or whatever, as mm-hmm. being in everything, you know, in the mountains, in the streams, in the grass. Um, and nobody's perfect on this earth, but they lived as close as they could to a spiritual sort of path. Many of the ancient Mm. cultures tried to do that right around the world, quite independently, because of course, back in history, there was no communication between them. And so many of them literally had it beaten out of them uh, that they had to view life in a particular way. And I think that's the problem now in in many respects with, with the modern world. We've lost so much of that spirituality. And sadly, religions aren't necessarily filling that void. Politicians certainly aren't. No. Um, so where where do you find it? Um, we are spirits. We come from spirit. We are spirit now. We will return to spirit. And I think if we can have that greater spiritual perspective on life in general, it helps people to live in a better way. But yes. I'm not going to tell people how to live or what to believe or anything. Let Everybody should find their own truth. But I hope there's enough in Revelation, and it certainly isn't preachy for one second, but I hope there's enough in there that will, if nothing else, make people think. 
Mm, yeah, no, it isn't at all. So I and I like I said, I'm only I'm only up to chapter four. But like I said, read <laughs> while I was reading, I was like, oh, oh, yeah, I keep forgetting, you know. And I had to remind myself that that you know, that is your that's where you've come from. This is your experience. This is your, sure. your knowledge of the world has come from this perspective. But I mean, you must be an incredibly intelligent, and I'm not saying that any of my other guests are not, but you must be an incredibly intelligent person to be able to, to do that, to trick me, so to speak, so to speak, <laughs> trick me into forgetting that you have that background, that you've had these experience, you know, these spiritual experiences. Um, and I like it. It is exciting yeah. for me, even as somebody, somebody who, who likes, you know, I like these kinds of, these kinds of stories. I like having these experiences. I've had many over, over my years. And, you know, so I've had my own spiritual experiences and I've spoken to many people. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to take away from anybody else who I've spoken to, but it is sometimes very easy to remember where someone is coming from the perspective that somebody is writing a book. Yeah. Even if it's, even if it's fiction, you know, they may have an agenda or something and, and my, my, yeah. my I don't have that. It's not an agenda to make people, you know, believe something or not believe something. I leave it yeah. deliberately to the reader to make their own mind up. Yeah. Um, but I think that's why I wrote the whole thing as a thriller. I mm. wanted it just to be a, a really enjoyable read, which people can mm. pick up a, a book, short chapters, fast paced, a lot of action, a lot of things going on, a lot of humor, a lot of all sorts of stuff and you can just read it and just mm. read it as a, a, a thrilling book you don't have to uh, be provoked if you don't want to there are a lot of sort of things along the way that should hopefully make you think or at least open your mind hopefully. yeah um, and that's all that i like to do i, I like open-minded people i like people who uh, are open to debate who will not be myopic in their beliefs or dogmatic or there's mm. only one way of viewing the world or you must believe this or that and that's why i shy away from having a label i don't want to be known as a spiritualist or a, as whatever, a spiritual whatever, medium whatever. or something like that i yeah. am a free thinker yes i've done these things yes you know you could call me a philosopher i've got a degree in philosophy yes. you could call, call me what you like but to me i'm i'm a free thinker but the whole reason I added these things to myself in my life, having had all these extraordinary experiences which started in very young childhood, was so that I could be grounded in true knowledge. And when people discuss these things with me as we are now, I can draw on all that experience, not just the spirituality, but the f philosophy, uh, the science, mm. religion, whatever it might be, and I can talk to you uh, with knowledge and with experience about these things and show you that the book Revelation, although it is a thrilling read, has a lot of depth to it. Yes, there is. There is a lot. And I'm looking for, I'm going to, I might even do some more reading tonight before I go to bed. <laughs> I enjoy it. <laughs> at least it's there, you know, it's, it's there and it's yeah. easy for me to do. It's on my iPad. Oh, it makes it so, true. so easy. It is available yeah. as an ebook, which I think is wonderful as well. As much as, look, I cannot go past a good book. Uh, yeah. And I love to have, I love to have physical books. However, yeah, me too. like I see your bookshelf behind you and I've got one <laughs> similar and I just think, where do I put them? You know, and <laughs> short of building another room and another bookshelf or whatever, it's lovely to have, an, to have the option at least to have the ebook. Yeah. I don't have to wait for it to be posted to me. I had it straight away and yeah. was able to get my teeth into it immediately. Yeah, it's on Kindle as well, or you could buy the hard, you mm. know, the, uh, the actual hard copy. But uh, yeah, I, I had a look. Books. I think it's on Amazon. Um, yeah, I did have a quick Amazon, look. Yeah. It's on Amazon. Yeah. I didn't I see whether on, or not it was uh, on Booktopia. It probably uh, is, could to be honest. Be, it's Barnes and Noble, it's uh, Waterstones, all, all the main bookstores you can buy it online. Or you can walk into a bookshop and just say Revelation by Nick Pease. They'll find I it wish that, that were true here. Google. We don't have any anymore. I uh, know. It's, it's such sad, a sad, the, the sad day when the last there. bookstore closed. Yeah. Oh, don't, don't. I know. Now we have you to know, just wait for them all to be posted. But we're very lucky. Booktopia in Australia tends to stock all of the major books and very much so 
I think there's only been one author I've spoken to on this podcast who has a book and it wasn't available on Booktopia. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. which I found interesting. Um, and yeah. then there are many who have print on demand, which is also oh. good. So they they yeah, have yeah. some that are like Amazon does that with some with some people. Yeah, well, I know so, it's, it's, it's available on 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 Amazon and through in Australia. Um, because my dad lives in Australia, so I know that ah. cause, cause he's, bought, he's bought a couple of copies. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I've just looked it up. It is available on Booktopia. So it says oh, right. that it is currently in stock. It's sold by it's Booktopia. Sold. So it's not a third-party marketplace dealer or anything. It's actually sold by Booktopia as a physical paperback and yeah. as an ebook. So you can choose. Now, don't make the mistake of looking at Henry V, that's not the book we're talking about. It's called Revelation. <laughs> I don't think, is that yours, the other one? I don't think it is, is it? No, no, it definitely isn't. No, no. <laughs> I looked and I went, oh, that it doesn't look like, no, that doesn't look right. But no, that one no. does come up. So if people are Googling, I've, I'm going to put a link in the show notes. If you're in oh, Australia, you. if you're in the US, Amazon is always your number one place yeah. to look usually. So right. I'll put a link to that one too. But it is available in Australia. It's under $21, yeah, I think, which I think is a brilliant price. Probably, most people who have bought it in Australia that I know of um, have bought it through Amazon. So it's always a good one, isn't it? Yes, yeah. The only thing with Australians and Amazon, um, where it's still very new here. So I found that oh. some people, yeah, as far as getting things um, posted, sometimes when you buy them, they're sending them from the US. I've had some oh, wonderful I... buys on Amazon. There's there's stuff that gets to me really quickly, and then there's other stuff I've bought in particular books, um, and they take months to get to me because oh, they're coming gosh. from the United States. And, yeah, it's uh, a little bit of a nightmare well, dad, while they get themselves ordered, organized. Yeah, my dad ordered his through Amazon and got them pretty okay. quickly, and he's in Australia. But, yeah, Brilliant. it's, I don't know, it's whatever. Get yeah. to your favorite place. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I strongly yeah. suggest everybody in Australia buys it from Booktopia. Please stop supporting <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Utopia is a private company. It's a, it's an Australian oh, owned it? company. Oh, that's nice. yes. Yeah, we'll support yeah. them then. So yeah, support the local company. Yeah. Stop giving Nick Absolutely. Bezos more money. <laughs> Yeah, oh, he's no, going to sue me now, I'm sure. But that's my opinion. <laughs> we should stop. We should stop Be you know, I really am a strong supporter of local business, supporting sure. family businesses, you know, small. Yeah. Not that Booktopia is small. They've they've built themselves up quite large now, but it is an Australian-owned sure. business. So oh, definitely well, that, support that, local. I, I think wherever, I mean, I, I'm a great fan of amazon obviously because uh, me too <laughs> I think, uh, yeah they're exactly. gonna ban me now so, nick i've said stop giving them money they're gonna nev they're never gonna let me yeah. shop there again <laughs> no no exactly no I'm, I'm a great fan of theirs and i think wherever people find find it easier to to shop then uh, you guys are lucky too so. in the uk i've been to the uk i lived in manchester yeah. for a while and i know that amazon oh, nice. is really quite well established there more so than in, oh, than in australia it's yeah. and not just for books that you can get ed, for everything anything. and it, yeah it really is super yeah it's a great but service. then again you yeah. guys had uber eats before we did you had all the you know your delivery <laughs> companies <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And where i live yeah. i don't have any of it anyway so i live oh. out in the country i don't i don't have an option where does your dad live in australia well, he's actually moved recently to Byron Bay, would you believe? Oh, uh, which is uh, what a nice yeah, place of the world. He used to live in Sydney, um, right? But moved, moved out to uh, Byron Bay, which he loves. So, uh, yeah, nice, nice place to live. Plans I guess. to I visit? Haven't then? visited it there, but yeah, but uh, uh, I'm told it's lovely. It's a beautiful part of the world. Byron Bay yeah. attracts people who are also very spiritual. Um, there is a oh, vortex yeah. Yeah. of energy there, so it seems to attract people who are connected spiritually to the earth. And um, you will find yeah. crystal shops, you'll find healers there, you'll find you know spiritualists there, and um, it's it's a great place. It's it's. Awesome energy, awesome energy. That's I awesome. love it. That sounds there. very nice. Yeah, much nicer yeah, than Sydney. Yeah. So he's got, he's done the right thing. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> when have you visited, or not to Byron Bay, no, but have not, you been to yet. Australia? I, he's only moved uh, in the last few months. So where are oh. you based, Jesse? So I'm in Adelaide. For me to fly oh, yeah. to Byron Bay would take me a couple of hours, but yeah. Um, 
I could like to Sydney, it's about an hour and 40 minutes. If I were to oh, drive yeah. there, it would take me 18 to 20 hours. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Yeah. I'm right Which down the bottom in the middle. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, compared to England, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And like I said, I've spent time there and I know how easy it is to get from one place to another. And it's just not like that here. You know, in Europe, no. in a couple of hours, you could have crossed a few countries already. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. exactly. Yeah. I have a European passport and I'm heading back next year. So oh, good. I'm right. looking forward to it. It'll be my first time in six years. So wow. it's... I'm it, I'm excited. And I'll be in yeah. the UK. So my friend lives in um, Nuneaton. I know, in the Midlands. In yes. the, yeah, yeah. She's from rugby. Yeah. So yeah. Um, as you would know, rugby is the birthplace of rugby. And I've been there too. Yeah. I lived there for a little while um, on, uh, on Longford Road, which is sort of the main road leading into rugby. And um, it's a beautiful place. I love it there. I just yeah yeah, love it, no, it is. Yeah. I'm exploring through Coventry and Birmingham, and then yeah, I moved up to yeah. Manchester. <laughs> yeah, they all have their individual character and everything. Yeah. Absolutely. And where are you based? I'm I'm near Gloucester, which is oh. uh, sort of southwest England. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, southwest Midlands, really, sort of not not getting right down towards the Devon and Cornwall, which we call the real southwest, but. But sometimes we call Gloucester Southwest because it is out that that way. In that way, no, is that nice, where you've nice always story. been, or are you a no, trans? No, no, I'm originally from London. I'm originally from London, but moved out here. Oh gosh, about thirty odd years ago. So okay, yeah. so you're established here it. anyway. Yeah. Tell oh, me yeah. Yeah. your experiences, uh, if you don't mind. I would like to talk yep, about yeah. your experiences with the Spiritualist Church. I have, I've, I've been exposed to people who grew up in the spirit in in that world, and I find it really fascinating. It is not a big thing here in Australia, but in England, in particular, it was quite a movement, wasn't it? Yes, it sort of, in a funny way, tends to come and go out of fashion. It depends. I mean, when I was developing over 30 years ago, well over 30 years ago, actually, um, it was it was sort of one of the heydays of, of the spiritual spirit, spirituality, really, not just within mm. spiritualism and the churches, but, but also just generally. I think people were looking more outwardly. Uh, there were all kinds of things going on that uh, where people were trying to heal the world, uh, feed people, whatever it might be, uh, and people had that sort of focus, and, and we kind of lost it, I think. Um, mm. Other than those of us who were sort of still very much attached to that kind of way of, of thinking and living, um, yeah. and maybe it'll come back. It will. These things tend to be cyclical, uh, and when mm -hmm. people get fed up with the kind of materialistic sort of brutality of a lot of what today is about they they might turn back to 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 uh to looking more spiritually at things um, yeah but for me it was it was natural that i would gravitate that way i think when you have those kind of experiences as a child you can't get away from it to me mm -hmm. it's it's like two plus two equals four it's it's as simple as that it's it's reality yeah. Um, and I fully accept that those who don't have those experiences may not be able to imagine what that's like or or and and might not accept it outright. And I totally welcome that. I think it's good to be skeptical. Um, mm. Whatever you're looking at, whether it's spirituality, whether it's religion, whether it's politics, science, uh, be skeptical. Question, question, question. Always ask questions. Yes, we say always, that a lot on always. this show. But, yeah. But a lot of people don't, of course. They just accept the status quo or they accept what people are telling them. Mm. Uh, they accept that if they don't do this or they don't do that, they're going to go to hell or something like that. It's, it's very uh, wicked that those sort mm. of things have been imbued into people's psyche because it's not based in reality at all no um i've always found when spirit beings come through whether they're people you know or whether they're higher spiritual entities like guides and helpers or whatever they come with pure love they come mm -hmm. purely to send you love and healing 
and to look after you, to guide you perhaps, never to judge you, never to wag their finger at you, never to tell you you're doing right or wrong, but purely to come with love and wisdom and to say, you know, we're with you, um, find your own truth. And I think one of the things that always, always attracted me to that higher spirituality is that the guides and helpers always say, look, if anything we tell you offends your reason, reject it. Yeah. Now, that's an absolute revelation because so many people grow up being told what to believe or what not to believe or mm. this is the way. And, uh, you know, if you deviate from that, you're, you're somehow going to be in trouble or whatever. And here's the guides and helpers saying, no, it's not like that at all. You find your own truth. But if you don't like what we're going to tell you, just reject it. Find your own path. And I thought, that's, yes, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And they will be there for you with love. Now, if yes. people are coming through with love and healing and just joy and, and want to embrace you in that, what can possibly be wrong with that? And it really mm. kind of riles me sometimes when people talk about, oh, you're dabbling with the occult or you're, oh. you're getting involved in dark things. Yeah. You're not. You're not at all. What could be more beautiful than than a world of love and, and people trying to do good and trying mm. to raise up the vibrations of the earth by living in harmony, by looking after one another, looking after the animals, looking after the planet, having an mm. outward focus that says we need to look after those less fortunate than ourselves. We have the ability to feed and clothe and give fresh water to everybody on earth. Why aren't we doing that? Why not? Um, yeah. Unless the public will is motivated, unless the riches uh, of the world, whether they're in the hands of billionaires or corporations or whatever it is, why aren't the politicians motivated to, to create this new world? But how can you when you've got regimes who just seem to want to grab land, overcome people, subjugate people, yeah. be oppressive, make people think the way they want to think? That's why I say we really need a slap around the face. We need a wake up call. We yeah. need something to happen. We need a revelation. We need a, a device yeah. to be uh, to, to show people that life after death is reality. Or yeah. who knows? We need little men to come down from outer space or something to just say, you're not the be all and end all of everything. Mm. You're part of a much, much wider thing. There are billions of universes. Yeah. Do people ever stop to look up at the stars and think, what are we part of? What's out there? What, what, what How is can this you thing not? Like? I, you I, know? I couldn't agree more, Jesse, but a lot of people yeah. don't. Um, no. You know, it, it's like, look up, look out and say, yeah, we're part of something so vast. Mm. And spirit yeah. life is part of that. And it's not just one spirit world um, when we pass over there are multi dimensions to the spirit world because of course life is eternal progress and mm. a lot of people who've had near death experiences will will talk about how passing over is like uh, walking into another room it's not like mm -hmm. ascending somewhere or anything like that it's literally in the spirit world they're all round and about us but yes. there are higher dimensions of the spirit world because when we pass over we may take our kind of earthly existence still quite close to us but as we develop in spirit and those who have developed for centuries, millennia, even there's no time as such over there. Um, talking about the guides and helpers and, and, and those sort of higher uh, spiritual entities, mm. they're on much higher planes. And these things are vast subjects in themselves. But unless you're sort of interested to look into it, why should you be? You don't have to. Um, but it interests me. Uh, yeah, and yeah. so I do take a great interest in it. Uh, yeah. But again, I do force others to. I just say, look, I'm going to write you a thriller, which you could enjoy. If you look at the deeper questions posed in it or the deeper elements within it, I think it can only make you think about the nature of existence and uh, where we're going with the world and where it could be. Um, mm. But that's up to you. That's entirely up to you as to, as to yeah. whether you want to go that way or not. Yeah, I've had these discussions so often. In fact, just you know, you said about the little, the little people coming from and from out of space, out of space. Yeah. We, I was talking about this in particular with somebody, and I said, you know, uh, what would what would we be like if that happened? Yeah. 
Oh. I think that there will be two two lots of people. There will be those who will freak out. They will yeah. not know how to handle. Yeah. How, you know these things happening, and then there will be the others who will be who will really embrace it and actually um, want to change and yeah. want to listen to them. And then I posed a question to my friend, and I said, "Why haven't they come already?" Uh, well, there's a good answer to that. I read it just recently. Funny Did enough. you? It's a bit of an amusing one. You know Arthur C. Clarke, who wrote 2001, A Space Odyssey? I do, yes. Uh, uh, absolutely. Well, I, don't know, I don't know him, of course, but yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but he, 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 he said something which just made me chuckle. It was so, so perfect for what you're talking about. He said, when you look up at the universe there's no doubt there are countless intelligent uh, expressions of life out there but he said but they're far too intelligent to want to come here to want to come here <laughs> yeah i agree which i thought was absolutely brilliant because when you think about it they're probably likely to be blasted out of the skies or something i mean we, we so many people right. live in, in fear and trepidation because they've had it sort of beaten into them whether it's about spirituality or whatever it might be mm. that everything is a threat and mm -hmm. yeah uh, you know you, you have to approach things with caution but it it's a bit like the question i pose in revelation about what would happen if life after death could 100 percent be proved to be a, a scientific fact people would react differently and yes. what we're talking about it, 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 amusingly but yeah let's let's hypothetically say what if uh, another intelligence could visit uh, the earth a lot of people would react with fear and mm. p potentially aggression um it, which doesn't does bode well for us <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> They may have already uh, been here. See, this is what I said to my friend. They might have already been here and chose not to reveal themselves <laughs> simply because or, they saw or, that we were not involved in that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this place we've arrived at? Let's get, let's get back, yeah. Uh, you know, they so are so intelligent. They're so evolved people. past us that they just yeah. they took one look at us and thought, how can we possibly how we'll come can we back possibly, in a thousand years? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. exactly. If exactly. Yeah. yeah. If they haven't oh, wiped yeah. themselves out, and you know, I yeah. I think yeah. about I think about it often, where you know the ancient people, the Mayans, and you know the the Inca, where they've talked about people coming out of the sky, and yeah. we we watch documentaries where they talk about how advanced some of these civilizations were, that. We probably have been to a point before where we possibly could have traveled to 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 worlds far away from here, where we could have traveled to outer space, and of course we destroyed ourselves over and over again. And yeah. um, that is a that's a real thought that I've had often. Yeah. That you know the, we the are just is, we. Though. Yeah, the problem is, Jesse, that we all we can do is speculate on, on those. Yeah, things. that's yeah. right. Yeah. Same with, with life after death, I guess. Apart from that I've had those experiences, for me, it is purely real, where I've, whereas mm. I've never had any experience of, well, to my knowledge, of uh, uh, bumping into anybody from, from another intelligence. But, um, mm. yeah, it's well, yeah, nice see, to Not that we know of. <laughs> Not that we know of, not that we know of. Yeah. But again, you're going back to the ancient cultures who mm. in many ways had a kind of knowledge and certainly from a spiritual point of view, I would say in many respects, were far more advanced to what we are today. And we've mm. taken a step back and lost a lot of that. Um, and that, you know, talk about the Native Americans again for a minute, that incredible respect for nature that they yeah. have seeing the great spirit in everything and they never took out from nature more than they could put back in and when they did take the buffalo's life they would pray to the spirit of that buffalo and they would use every sinew literally of yes. that uh, buffalo for the benefit of their people but they yeah. never just slaughtered buffalo for the for the sake of of their hides or, or whatever it might be like sadly when the white man uh, 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 swept across the United States and, and did that. It, mm. it, horrifying, and the genocide that happened to the Native American people. I mean, some mm. of the things that that we've done, because there hasn't been a spiritual perspective to it. 
Oh yes, no. they may have called themselves. Oh yeah, I'm I'm this faith or that faith or the other. But actually, that practicing of spirituality, that's what we lost. And mm. uh, it's not enough to just go into a church on a Sunday and pray and think that's it. I'm done. Uh, my yeah, spiritual yeah. good for another uh, week. <laughs> I'm good for another week. Um, yeah. Or to go to confession and think that's it. I've just you know. Yeah, I'm absolved now. Or yeah. it might be, but I'm absolved <laughs> of that. I'll go out and yeah. do it again. It, it beggars belief. It really does. In so many ways, yeah. we're so backward, uh, spiritually at least. And mm. I do hope that we rediscover uh, that spirituality for the sake of humankind, if nothing else. Mm. Um, because not enough people, in, to my mind, open their eyes, look upwards, look outwards, and think about what we're doing to the animal kingdom, what we're doing to the planet, what Just, we're doing yeah. to each other. Yeah. Uh, yes. What are you know, it's it's it, and what's happening in Ukraine? Absolute mm. craziness, brutality yeah. on a scale that we thought we'd never see again, and now it's playing out. What's going on? And yeah, I have to say, I fervently hope. I do hope something like revelation happens because we need that. We need mm. to have that that wake up call and to say, you know what, we've got to live our lives better. We've got to live with a spiritual perspective. We've got to we've got to find ways where we can live in harmony, show more yeah, compassion, yeah. or toleration, and just understand one another. We'll always be different. We'll always have our differences. Nobody's perfect. I'm but it's about understanding those differences, accepting absolutely. that we are we have our differences, you know, and yeah, accepting absolutely. that everybody has a different way of looking at things, yeah. even though you and I may agree on many things, you know, we, we obviously come to, to a point where we are, we're seeing things similarly, but yeah. obviously we're not going to agree on everything. We wouldn't be human if we did, no. you know, it just, it wouldn't be healthy. real. Yeah. That's yeah. very healthy. And what isn't healthy is where you have uh, movements, whether they be uh, based in, political ideology, whether they be based in a faith or whatever it is, where you're only allowed to think in one particular way. And mm -hmm. that's why I called myself, a, 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 you know, a, 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 an open-minded uh, seeker after truth. I don't have one way of viewing things. And no. if people engage me in debate, I love it. I, I love discussing things and finding other people's point of view, understanding where they're coming from. I think that's very healthy to, to that, that we can all do that without making people think our way is the best. Yes. Because it's only if you pool everybody's thoughts and thinking that you, you, you strive towards something that might be better. You put all your minds yeah. together and, and actually create a better world. But yeah, yeah, that's why I wrote Revelation. I know we're coming back to sort of where we started, but it really is why I wrote it. I wanted to, to pose the question, what would happen? What mm. would happen if, if life after death could 100% be proved to be a scientific fact? How would yeah. people react? And I find it fascinating. And let's talk about quickly, when you're saying how would people react, what do you think, just you personally, and maybe not not based on your, well, you can't, you can't answer it without basing it on your previous experience. I understand that. But what do you think would be the one thing everyone would learn that would change how we are? Let's just say it happened tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. you see on the news and you think, oh, holy hell, like, <laughs> they've done it. My book, my book is now a documentary. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> what do you think is the one thing that we should be learning? You know, and I, I said not from your personal experience, but even if you wanted to, you, you, uh, you are a I, spiritualist I would, medium, you know, yeah, what lessons more, have you learned? Sure. It's more, more a hope, I suppose, Jesse, that the one thing I would hope is that, People would say, right, this proves that there is more to life than meets the eye. And that therefore, doesn't this put our earthly lives into a wider perspective? And doesn't mm -hmm. that make us think how we should live our lives? Not because there's going to be great rewards or not or, or damnation on the other side or anything, anything like that. No, but just if it did that, I think that mm. would be the one thing that I would rejoice in. But the mm. whole point, of course, in the story behind Revelation is making people think. And it, I know it has because I've had feedback from people who've read the book 
to exactly this extent. They've said, yeah, I think you're right. There would be a divergence of opinion. There would be those yes. with entrenched views who have dogmatic beliefs or political agendas mm -hmm. um, who find it a threat. There would be those who perhaps are more enlightened, more free thinking, open minded, who would absolutely rejoice in it, welcome it, etc. Embrace it. it. Yeah. Embrace it. It would it, there'd be a, a huge divergence of, of reactions to it. But yeah. the one thing, just to answer your question again, is is that that once you accept that existence um, of putting life in a greater perspective and therefore hoping that all humankind would work from a kind of spiritual perspective to live in harmony, compassion, toleration, uh, look after each other and do things that uh, uh, do not suppress people, do not oppress people um, mm. and encourage everybody to, to be looked after and to be the best they can and to feed and clothe everyone, etc. Of course, we're all going to be born in different countries to different circumstances. Some will be born in countries which purely by their uh, geographic nature and everything are going to need help a lot where yeah, there are yeah. floods, there are droughts, there is lack of food, crops fail, etc. Um, mm. Others are going to be born in countries which are kind of flowing with milk and honey, to, to, to coin a biblical phrase, as it were, to borrow mm. a biblical phrase, but where, you know, we have everything. Um, but it's that how that is shared out. And I would hope that a more spiritual perspective brings that mindset to people and, and makes them think, yeah, uh, this is a major step forward for humankind. And yeah. without giving it away, the end of my book, which I believe is hugely life affirming, does just that, does say to people, mm. this is how things could be. We could live in joy and hope. And, uh, you know, we're not we're not meant to suffer. Um, a lot of people make a joy out of suffering and say, oh, no, that's all part of it. And you're born part in of it, sin yeah. and all the rest of it. Absolute Makes us nonsense. more grateful when things go right. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's you know, we, we, the human condition. We, 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 yeah, some people will be born uh, disabled or with mental disabilities or whatever it might be. That's part of the human condition. But it's how the rest of us react to that and how we help them, how we how we look after one another and everything. Um, and there are millions of people who, of course, are doing exactly that. And they're not necessarily doing it from a spiritual perspective or anything else. You, you know, as I say, you don't have to believe anything in, in particular, but it's if you do have that uh, a wider perspective on life, I think it can only make you think and act in particular ways. Mm. And those ways can only be beneficial to humankind. If you yeah. are brought up in a system which is very dogmatic or um, has a political ideology, and we all know who we're talking about, which seeks to uh, oppress and subjugate, etc., how can that be good for the, for the world and for people? Um, no. And for their, their 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 human development, let alone their spiritual development. So mm. that's the one thing I really hope that if it did happen, uh, it would give that greater perspective to people's lives and say, yeah, we've got to look at how we're living and how we want to go forward. Because mm. let's face it, we read reports in the press every day, quite alarmist reports of how resources are running out, of how... Yes. Um, you know, the oceans are under great threat, how global warming, uh, uh, you know, all these discussions you and I are having could be completely uh, superfluous if we're not careful yeah. in the next 30 to 50 years. Uh, I, I won't be around to see that, but who knows uh, what will happen. Uh, surely there, there comes a time when we have to, to think of things differently. And I can't mm. see that coming at the moment enough from politicians or, or faith leaders or, or any other no. way. And so it needs that wake up call, that kind of uh, wake up to a greater spirituality or whatever it might be that says, we've got to live differently. We've got we to, have to be have different. different on yeah. That. If I'm honest yeah. with you, Nick, I kind of hope it isn't going to happen tomorrow because we've just come out of, we're coming out of a pandemic. 
which yes. really was a test it for was. us. And we failed miserably, you know, really. <laughs> I don't think we did it very well, let's just say. <laughs> I, I would agree wholeheartedly with that, yes. <laughs> that yeah. whole divergence thing, I think, you know, we've been there, we've done, <laughs> we've done it, I think we need a little bit of a break. Also, you know, the world is falling apart with people like Putin and you've got people, well, we, we've just had a very conservative prime minister <laughs> leave of yeah. this now and he's yeah. making waves and headlines all across Australia and the world with his ridiculousness. So <laughs> the, all of the, we have to purge all of that stuff first. And I, when you said about the divergence, Revelation, I think if it happened tomorrow, we couldn't handle it. If no, the little... Not the little grey men or whoever they are were to come out of the sky and start talking yeah. to us, we wouldn't handle it. We really wouldn't handle it. We haven't evolved yeah, enough. I think, I think you're very right. I mm. think with the with the way um, a lot of thought is today, and I mean sort of political thought and, and just the way a lot of people are very entrenched in their thinking and see threats and fear all, all around. No, I think you're right. A mm. lot of people welcome it and handle it extremely well. But are they in the majority? I'm not sure. So, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. We've been working on it for a while now. <laughs> but it's 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 very interesting to think about. So I thank you for yeah. I thank you for yeah, bringing yeah. that to our attention for sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I want to remind people: Booktopia, Amazon. It's called Revelation. It is by Nick Pease, and that it's. Nick and then Pease, P E A S E. I've put a link anyway in the show notes. So if you're listening now, you will certainly hear it and you'll see the link. <laughs> you'll find it. You'll find it where you can. <laughs> I thank you, Nick. It has been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you, Jesse. It really has been a pleasure. Thank you very much. I appreciate you joining us. And if you're out there listening, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow. You'll get regular updates of when we have new episodes. We're on Twitter, Facebook. I'm even on TikTok and I, I have been doing some stuff on TikTok. So <laughs> if you're out there, it's going to be Jesse. Not it's going to be, it's going to be Jesse. That's the name on TikTok. That's the name on Instagram. Utterly unscripted on Facebook and on Twitter. Thanks everyone for joining us and we'll see you next time. Take care, Jesse. Bye-bye. Thanks, Nick. <laughs>